Hello, I'm Rahul from the Fun Robotics Network, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the number two high scoring match in the world at the NorCal Play Space Qualifying Tournament with a non penalty score of 216. In particular, we're going to be taking a look at how teams are beginning to approach the far launch zones and how this is leading to some high scoring and coordinated autonomous artifacts scattered all over the field and rapid tele up cycles. Check out more on this episode of Funalysis. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. Take on the decode season with AntiMark. FTC teams can discover great components such as AntiMark's 3-inch mechanum wheels, programmable servos, sensors that detect distance, color, orientation, and many more solutions for your team. Find this and more at AntiMark.com and count on AntiMark for the reliable service that teams expect. To start with some background, we're looking at the championship match of the Play Space Qualifying Tournament number 3 in NorCal, and we're going to see some both teams exhibit a really strong ability to shoot far zone shots, which significantly influences the game throughout Autonomous and Telia. On the blue lines, we've got team 23224 Cheesy Bites in the bottom left corner. And in the top left corner, we've got team 76401 MSET Betafish on the blue lines. And then on the red alliance, we've got team 8404 Quicksilver in the bottom right, and team 22297 Infinite Bots in the top right. So as this match starts in autonomous, we're gonna look, we're gonna notice an almost an immediate pattern that shows how both alliances have clearly coordinated their autonomous. We're gonna see both robots on the short zone immediately shoot their shots, 7641 and 22297, while the far zone robots kind of wait to shoot theirs. We're gonna watch this play out. They quickly get their three shots off, and now the far zone robots are gonna go and try and make their shots from the far zone. And how this is able to be so coordinated demonstrates how teams are able to, teams are starting able to have these higher scoring autos because they can score them in much faster succession. Rather than having to wait for both robots to go into the short zone and try to make your auto work like that, if you can quickly shoot your shots in the far zone and then the cloak zone or the other way around, we're going to see some much higher scoring autonomouses. Now, going on to the next section, we're going to see the both close zone robots Intake the first stack of three while opening the gate at the same time, which saves significant time and which is something that I think teams should definitely be doing after shooting their close zone shots. While the far zone shots, they take a slightly divided approach. The red, the red alliance goes for them in that human player station, while the blue alliance goes for the first stack. And we're going to see that play out right here where um, the, both alliances open their gates and we're going to see so many balls roll out onto the field which gives out a huge number of artifacts for the far zone robots to collect. We're gonna see them quickly intake them, and then both alliances will go to shoot them from their far zones. And this is showing how fast those far zone cycles can truly be in a match. They can be groundbreaking and autonomous. And as the match cycles, we're gonna, I wanna to continue to notice like how chaotic this autonomous almost feels. It almost feels like not traditionally like FTC. There's, if we notice on the field, there's like, at least nine balls out of their starting position. They're not They're not on the stack. They're not in the secret tunnel or human player stations. They're just randomly scattered on the field. And I think teams being able to deal with these almost chaotic autonomouses, potentially detecting balls that are rolling on the field or having really effective intakes that can intake balls are going to be super key at a high level because of just how random this autonomous can be. Because both alliances can miss shots. Their artifacts can roll anywhere. When you open the secret tunnel, those, those artifacts can go anywhere. We're gonna to continue to see this chaoticness play out as alliances are kind of employing the strategy of pushing artifacts into the wall that rolled out from the secret tunnel. And we're gonna see team uh, Cheesy Poo cheesy Bites in the bottom left corner employ that by quickly turning into the human player zone. And that ends the autonomous period. Now going into Teliac, we're gonna see teams sort of develop into a consistent pattern with their cycles, um, with some robots going for the far launch zone and some going for the close. As soon as the game starts, we're gonna see that um, both alliances open up their gates, which is something we've seen in a lot of in a lot of matches. The teams quickly wanna empty out their autonomouses, put force balls, force artifacts onto the field and get artifacts in play. As we go on, we're gonna see the MSET beta fish do that and 
Could there, but what we're gonna notice in the bottom middle corner is that 23224 Cheesy Bites is sort of getting their shots out from that far line zone, which is almost like a four or five foot cycle for them. And that's really impressive that their shooters able to sort of do that. And what we're noticing is their cycle times are much quicker because they're able to just shoot from that far zone. While if we look at over at the short launch zone, we see there's a lot more congestion actually. Infinibox and uh, M set beta fish are sort of in a pushing battle trying to get their shots off. Well, there's no one near the bottom, the bottom middle or the far line zone so near cheesy bites. There's there's no one near to sort of throw them off their shot, which lets them get these really clean shots off. And obviously there's some accuracy issues at this point in the season, but long term it's gonna be really interesting to see if teams can develop these super consistent far line zone shooters, how that influences the ways that robots make their control over certain areas of the field. If we continue to go on over the map, we're gonna to continue to see Infinibox do a really good job of intaking and quickly getting those shots up. And what we're gonna notice here is their shooting time is so fast. We're gonna see Infinibots in the top right corner. They get their shots up in a, in a rapid succession. And that really allows them to have these quick cycle times and be sort of a, avoidable to defense because if they can get their shots off really fast, as, as we just saw, we'll, I'll play it again. Uh, as we just saw, they get their shots off right really quick. That's gonna allow them to sort of be really effective. And now what we're gonna see is there's actually starting to be some sort of congestion in that far launch zone. Teams are starting to realize that both uh, Quicksilver and Cheesy Bites are able to and pretty good at shooting from that far launch zone which means that as Cheesy Bites, their normal cycle time of just uh, shifting back and forth between the human player station and the far launch zone is disrupted. They're gonna try and push out Quicksilver from that far launch zone so that they can get their shots up. We're gonna see them push them to the left and that allows them to get some nice shots up, which is well played by, by Cheesy Bites and getting those shots up. Now, one thing we're gonna notice is that Cheesy Bites and all the drivers in this match have, a, a, have really good match awareness. They're, they're aware of when the gates are being opened. They're aware of when they're at risk of penalties. We're gonna see that Quicksilver is actually gonna open their gate, which Cheesy Bites knows that's the opportune time for them to go in and try and get those artifacts because they're in a protected zone in that area. Uh, Quicksilver, uh, who's opening the gate right now, the red gate is unable to, to actually hit them. So they're gonna quickly go over and Quicksilver has to get out of the way as we saw there because they, they know they can't risk penalties. And that's also well played by Quicksilver to avoid uh, avoid getting those crucial penalty points. Now, as the match goes on, we're gonna see teams continue to have these cycles of opening opening the gates and shooting from either the far launch zone or the close launch zone. And I'd especially like to highlight, again, Infinibots and Cheesy Bites. Infinibots is doing an amazing job of really cycling from that far human player zone and into the short launch zone in those diagonal cycles, while Cheesy Bites has developed, again, into a really nice pattern of shooting from those those far launch zones. And that's kind of making them not contact each other while the other two robots, uh, MSET Betafish and Quicksilver are more playing like the scavenger role where Quicksilver is getting some shots off from that far launch zone, but they're sort of able to grab artifacts that are rolling around the field. And that's interesting to see how robots are gonna develop into these archetypes or these roles throughout the course of the season. Now, we're gonna see those cycles play out where Quicksilver, or sorry, Infinibots quickly gets those artifacts, goes to shoot them over while Cheesy Bites continues to cycle and the other two robots, uh, M set Beta Fish and Quicksilver are sort of scavenging. Now, we're gonna see once again, there's starting to be some congestion in that far launch zone, which is really interesting because if if that short launch zone is sort of open right now, that gives Infinibots a really easy time at cycling, but Cheesy Bites is gonna quickly get get out of this by getting their shots off as, as M set Beta Fish leaves. Now, teams are gonna continue to cycle, which is, uh, in, in these roles, while there is still a slight more increase in congestion in the short launch zone, it's definitely interesting to see how there's starting to be some congestion in the far launch zone. Now, I'd like to highlight just once again how effective Infinibots' drivers are. They have these two purples right in front of them. They're going to quickly intake them without even slowing down their cycle path. Their regular cycle path is going straight to the human player station. They go on a slight, a slight curve, which they quickly intake, run to the human player station, grab that one purple. And that's a huge intake time, which is so fast. But the next thing I'd like to highlight is how MSAT Betafish, they're opening their gate. And what their drivers do is they recognize that Infinibots, which is in the top right corner, shooting their artifacts into the red goal, is actually 
away from them so they can't threaten them with penalties. So Enza Betafish uses this as the opportunity time to quickly grab some artifacts that are in their in the red secret tunnel zone, almost stealing those artifacts, which they are at heavy risk for getting penalties and getting some nice cycle times out. They're gonna quickly grab those artifacts. And by the time that Infinibots is over here, we're gonna see that MSA Betafish is well out of there, which is a really well, well done job by the MSA Betafish drivers in stealing those artifacts that were nicely out of the gate and but avoiding penalties. Now, as we go on, we're gonna see that um, once again, we're going to see these gate interactions are playing crucial throughout the match. Uh, Quicksilver is opening their the Red Alliance gate and Cheesy Bites, they're going to head over to try and intake, but Cheesy Bites is there. So what we're going to see is that they're actually going to have to, um, they're going to try and go over to intake. Cheesy Bites recognizes this and they're going to try and push them out, go into that intake zone and avoid them from getting some easy intakes. So again, yeah. Uh, Quick, uh, Quicksilver doesn't want to get those penalties right here. So as soon as they recognize that Cheesy Bites is pushing them a little, they get out of the way. And that's going to be really, really nice on how they're avoiding these penalties. But we're going to see uh, another penalty coming up shortly uh, as teams continue to cycle from those far launch zones and those close launch zones. But what we're going to notice at this moment is that uh, Infinite Bots is going to open their, open their gate, but and Quicksilver is going to sort of come over while Infinite Bots clears out so that Quicksilver can intake. But what's actually going to happen is Quicksilver is going to go to intake, but uh, the, the Emta Beta Fish recognizes that they're in the illegal intake zone. They're in that blue protected area. They, they drive all the way over here. If we recognize where Emta Beta Fish is in that short launch zone, they're going to drive all the way over here, go to intake, which incurs penalty points on the red lines. And that's good. That's going to be big. Now, as we continue to go throughout the rest of the match, we're, we're going to see one really key thing. In the beginning of the match, we saw how much randomness there was in Atarmus. There was there were so many artifacts scattered all over the field and throughout the beginning and middle of Talia. But now, going at the end, end of Talia, there's almost no artifacts on the field. There's a couple in the human player station of that Red Alliance, and there's a couple on the field in the blue secret tunnel zone and near that area. But other than that, almost all the artifacts are in the classified ramp. And that's really interesting to see how herding is gonna develop as a strategy if teams are gonna sort of restrict, if it's gonna be possible for teams to restrict the amount of balls of the other lines, especially when they're trying to create, uh, create these pattern points in getting those motif points. If let's say the blue, blue Alliance needs some sort of uh, green artifact to complete their motif, but the Red Alliance is able to starve them of green artifacts. That's going to play huge at a huge at a higher level. And I think we're kind of seeing that play out, not in terms of motifs, but just in terms of artifacts on the field. And then at the end of the match, obviously both alliances are, are well done in getting that full park and that partial park from one of the robots, which is again, at a high level, we're going to want to see teams do double, double full parks. But at a lower level, this is still a very impressive driving because it's hard to fit in that 18 inch square. And at the end of the match, we're actually gonna see the Red Alliance uh, set a score of 231 with penalties, but without penalties, that's a score of 216, which is the second ranked score in the world by one point. Thank you for listening to this episode of Fun Analysis. Let us know in the comments what you think teams should be prioritizing in terms of the far long zones versus the short long zones. Please keep, make sure to be subscribed to keep up for future content like these. And this is Rahul signing off on Fun Analysis. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Take on the decode season with Animark. FTC teams can discover great components such as Animark's 3 inch mechanic wheels, programmable servos, sensors that detect distance, color, orientation, and many more solutions for your team. Find this and more at Animark.com and count on Animark for the reliable service that teams expect. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu first.